At the inception of our esport, YouTube gaming was also taking off at the same time with like Modern Warfare 2 trick shotting, you know, FaZe was all of the rage. So when all of these pro players were trying to make some money, the prize claims weren't high enough, they had to get a piece of this pie and there was so much diversity in the content. You know, you saw everything from a 2v2 series with Moho and Sharp to funny moments throughout scrims whatever you would see the whole nine yards tips tricks class ups everything and for the longest time like i said there was no live streaming so this was the only way that we could bring eyes to the esport so obviously if there were more people creating content around the esport that means there were more people to discover the esport itself so me personally i found out about call of duty esports through i was watching a phase montage as ill camp something like that it was one with logic and then the very next suggested video was a fear moho montage that also had a logic song so i was like first of all i discovered logic at that time and i'm from maryland so that was a huge deal for me to hear that especially in a gaming montage i was like dude this is so dope so i instantly had that crazy connection with it and then, like I said, I really like Fear, Fear Moho, and I uh, watched that montage, and that instantly, I started just going from there. I went down the deep rabbit hole. I instantly was watching, you know, FaZe versus, I think it was A4N at the time. Uh, it was like Fizzerp and Spacely and all of them on FaZe, man. It, it was the craziest thing to see because, you know, there wasn't too much production and effort put into these videos, but like I said, there was so much creativity and the community itself was just so unique that, like I said, I knew I had to get in on it. Twitch came in and around Black Ops 2, that's when Nade Shot decided, you know, he was gonna start streaming and all the YouTube stuff really transitioned over to Twitch because it was just so much easier to create Twitch streams than it was YouTube videos. For the simple reason, you know, you just set it up one day, you click start, and then you just kind of go from there. Obviously, there's more that goes into streaming from that, but you know where I'm going. YouTube contains, you know, consistent effort to put in, and like I said, uh, requires a lot more effort. So I understand that from a competitor's level. You know, YouTube is a lot harder to put the time and effort in when you're trying to scrim as much as possible, trying to play these tournaments, whatever have you. So, like I said, 100% understand. But I want you to understand also that so many people came into this community solely off of YouTube videos and right now is probably the best time that we have to get this community back to where it was at one point. With all the eyes coming from Warzone, especially going into Cold War, there's so much hype that right now we really have to capitalize if we want to survive as an esport. Besides Octane, Attach, Enable, and you know, Sensor, those handful of players, there's really not that many people creating competitive Call of Duty YouTube videos. Everybody pretty much streams, and if they do upload videos, it's pretty much the same thing. And I dare you guys to comment your five favorite competitive Call of Duty YouTubers that aren't pro players, not pro players, down in the comment section below. I challenge you. So like I said, obviously you should focus on your gameplay as much as possible. But when it really comes to branding, there's a lot more longevity when it comes to YouTube rather than streaming because you could take a day off from making a video because quite honestly, you could catch a better idea for a video that day that you took off to go do your life things or whatever. But you could take a week off of YouTube and come back and quite honestly, people either wouldn't realize or don't care. If you take a week off of streaming, all of your viewers are gonna go find other people and they're just gonna watch those other people. 75% of the time, which obviously is a lot of the time, you're going to lose those fans when you stop streaming for even a day, even a week. If you have a consistent schedule, obviously, you know, you're going to stay on top of the ball, but it's, uh, it's a lot easier with YouTube to create that longevity. So when it comes down to stability and trying to bring them this income you know in the long run you're putting in a lot less effort with youtube if you just sit down and create a couple videos and that money continues to rack in if you can get the right views you know play the cards right uh like i said you'll continue to get that money when you don't even have to upload you could take a week off and still see the money coming in rather than twitch it just stops the second that you stop so like i said if you want to take a little less stress on in your day don't worry about streaming so much obviously if you're gonna play you might as well stream to begin with but put in a little bit more effort into your content that you're creating and build a little bit of a fan base around you build your community you know like I said find your purpose find the people that you can help do what you got to do and run with it 
and if you man if you don't know what that purpose is i will give consulting down in the comments bro just if, if you want to create content and you don't know how to do it what to do or where to even start please get in contact with me because i want to see as many competitive call of duty youtubers as possible like i said i think this is a once in a lifetime opportunity that we have to save this esport i think that if it goes down from here we kind of lost it they say viewership's at an all-time high but the the standard of living of these players especially amateurs at this current state is just atrocious compared to what it was when i started and i'm sure when a lot of you started burning out is so much easier to do than a lot of people think especially when you're doing something like playing a video game so you really have to find that balance and if you can't find that balance and you just want to put yourself through the grinder i respect it to an extent but the quality of life like i said has just gone downhill in the last couple of years so how are we going to maintain that create this content man I'm telling you, it will take so many burdens off of your back that you don't even realize. Instead of posting those clips on Twitter and making the funny little 30 second TikToks, put that shit on YouTube. Please, bro. I see so many people posting clips on Twitter. They're hilarious. That if they went on YouTube, they would see so many different eyes and get so much more attention to our esport that, like I said, the only people that are going to see those videos are people that are in our community because it just circulates all around. So we have to expand outside of our community to bring more eyes to the community. If that doesn't make sense to you, you need to go right the fuck back to kindergarten. Like I was saying, bro, when I first got into competitive Call of Duty, it was through Fear Moho. The first thing I did after watching his montage was click through and watch all the 2v2 videos that he made with Sharp. And they were absolute fucking comedy, man. I learned a lot about the game and I learned a lot about the esport itself. As well as I just laughed a lot. They were funny as shit, like I said. So I had a little bit of a connection with these guys. So obviously I followed them through the years. I supported them. I even have a fear hoodie. I guarantee there's not even probably five of those things out there in the world right now. So if any of you have a fear hoodie, bro, please send me a picture of it down. This is my Twitter send me that picture because i guarantee none of you have one like i was saying i'm far from the only person to discover competitive call of duty through youtube videos you know nade shot brought so many eyes to our esport hex brought so many eyes to our esport skump brought so many eyes to our esport all of these content creators had such big fan bases i brought so many people into like league play and game battles and tournaments and shit just because they wanted to be like these players so if we can build that fan base and that connection with these up and coming people, especially the underagers, it's gonna make it so much easier to keep people from burning out because there's more entertainment to it rather than just the grind, the grind, the grind. So like we were talking about in the podcast, link down in the description below. Uh, if this esport does transition over to PC, which I think it really should if it wants to survive, the only way that we're really going to survive is if they implement a direct in-game way to compete things like uh shit csgo i think has it built in uh overwatch i don't play any other esports but cod so i don't really know but everything is pretty much intuitive if you click in the game you either have the choice competitive or casual it should be that easy for people to pick up the game and discover competitive call of duty because that is the only way that like i said we are going to save this esport if there's so many eyes coming into this why not maximize how many eyes we can get on that another thing we were talking about in the podcast is right now with the underage rule a lot of players that like i said underage they just kind of chalk it there's obviously the people that do compete and they try to do what they can but there is not a lot of things to do if you're an underage player right now especially if you're trying to get away with doing it in an ethical manner so we gotta build a lot more infrastructure around the underage community so that way we have more people that want to compete in our esport at a younger age because a lot of people they don't want to just sacrifice the 16 hours a day that they've got to to stay on top of it to even make it into that league and if we have a bunch of people either having to sacrifice their actual life in their college or whatever to to do and go and play call of duty they should be able to find another form of success other than just getting into the league because if as of right now there's no tournaments like there used to be other than cheetah wonga we're pretty much shit out of luck cmg is out the fucking window if you even touch umg you're lost in the sauce 
and GB is just as bad. So like I said, we need to come together, get some ideas. If you guys have any ideas on how we can bring some six, fuck bro. Why is my camera always overheat? I can't even record for more than 10 minutes. So like I was saying before my camera battery overheated, if you guys have any suggestions on ways that we can provide more of a success feeling to these amateur players that are underage coming up to keep them in the loop so they don't feel like they're just wasting their time playing for absolutely nothing. Because like I said, they have to make that decision when they're 18 to either go to college or try to play COD. And if it's really their dream, man, a lot of players, if they try to go to college, aren't really going to follow through. They're just gonna go through that college route. So to keep people to continue to play this eSport, we have to make it a lot easier for these players that, like I said, when they had the decision to make and they had the time to sacrifice, why not give these players, like I said, a platform? It's, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one of these players. So it's not like this is me trying to benefit myself. This is me trying to benefit the overall community so that we survive and have a lot, like I said, more longevity because other esports have been doing this shit for years and years and years. And this is our first year going into our second year of actually being serious with this shit. So like I said, if we want to continue this, we have to build more of an underground scene because right now we don't have those NJ rods. We don't have those ETGs and Helix or all those local lands. So hopefully going into the Cold War, we will have some of these events but they're gonna be a lot more scarce and the community just doesn't have the hype that it did. Like I said, NJ Rod brought a lot of players up. ETG brought a lot of players up, including Simp, literally the best player in the game right now. So if that isn't a sign that we need to do something to get this community back into the position that was in, if we wanna survive, then we need to do something, man. Like I said, if any of you have any suggestions on things that we can do, I would love to hear them down in the comment section below. Like I said, the ways that I personally think are just creating a lot more content, creating a lot more diverse content, specifically YouTube, because like I said, anybody can live stream, anybody can hop on and turn their stream on with a click of a button, but you're not gonna be getting as many eyes to your shit because people are gonna be at work half the time. You don't know all these people's schedules. So to cater to everyone, why not? give a platform that they can watch your shit 24 seven. And if they want to binge watch all your shit one night, they can, they can't do that with Twitch really. As you know, they could be at work the hours that you're streaming. And if you don't have the VODs on, you're lost, bro. You're not getting that view. So to keep that person happy, make the YouTube video. It's that easy. If you really have to just clip your Twitch clips and put them on YouTube. Because, like I said, they're not going to just go into Twitch. Nobody watches the VODs on Twitch. Nobody watches past broadcasts. Everybody goes on Twitch to watch shit live. People go on YouTube to watch past shit. Pre-recorded shit goes on YouTube. Nobody wants to watch it on Twitch. So, get your content across as many platforms as possible. Like I was saying, especially YouTube, man. I'm telling you, it's the only way that we're gonna survive. And it's gonna help bring a lot of you a lot more income like it did a lot of these players back in the day. Now, it's not as YouTube money as it used to be. And it's definitely not what other people are making, but it is something. And trust me, in this community, everything adds up. My biggest motto is you're never a millionaire if you're a penny short. So stack everything that you guys can right now and try to make that money. Like I said, YouTube might be the way to do it and it will bring a lot more eyes to our eSport and hopefully brand deals to you. If any of you have some constructive criticism, please leave it down in the comment section below or tweet at me on Twitter at John Graceless. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of the day and I'm out, peace.